Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. How do you share data between services? This is easily the most common question when you have a system where there's many different services and each service owns a set of data. For example, maybe you need data from another service for validation purposes, or you need to send data to another service, a part of workflow. I'm gonna explain some different situations where you could share data but most importantly, where you shouldn't. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So the first example of situation that I wanna talk about is when you think you need to send data to another service. And this is usually a part of some workflow or some process that you have. So let's say with our shopping cart e-commerce example, we have our front end, that's our client, that when we are placing our order and going through our checkout process, it makes an RPC call or an HTTP call to our ordering service. And from there, it needs to call the shipping service to pass along that information about the shipping address that we're gonna be shipping our order to. So our shipping order then receives that request, and this could have been through some type of RPC call or HTTP call from ordering to shipping. Shipping saves that data, and then from there, our ordering service can then uh, persist the rest of the order information in its database. Now there are a bunch of issues with doing that synchronous request response between the ordering and shipping service. But for this video, what I really wanna focus on here is really that, that call really actually didn't need to happen. And that's because we're trying to pass information along to another service when it really should have the information that it needs in the first place. And what I mean by that is data ownership. So the idea here is that each service owns its own set of data. That means it should be the one responsible for getting that data. So that's my example here. If we're going through our e-commerce checkout, it's not like we're entering all this information and then sending it to the ordering service, like the shipping and billing information and everything. No, what would really likely happen is as we start our checkout process, we're hitting that ordering service. Maybe at this point, our client either provides some deterministic ID that it can be using throughout this process, or maybe ordering provides it one, but we're kicking off the checkout process. When we then enter our shipping information as the example, we're not telling that to the ordering service, we're telling that to the service that actually needs the shipping information, which is the shipping service. So at this point, our client can be requesting or sending that information to the shipping service with that common ID that ordering also knows about so that we can persist that shipping information for our order. Then finally, when our uh, customer goes through the complete process clicks the place order now button. At that point, we can persist our order in its entirety with all the items. We can be then generating a command or an event, depending on how you're doing workflow, that really that message would contain the order placed event as an example with the order ID that our shipping uh, system, that service can then pick up. There's no other information in that event. It doesn't contain the shipping information because our shipping service already has that information. It owns that data. So at this point, we have the order ID in that event. We know what shipping information um, exists in our system. And then we continue our process, which could be, for example, creating the shipping label. So the idea here is that the client is the one dictating, or even if you had an API gateway, dictating where requests are going based on kind of the behavior, the capabilities that you're providing and where the ownership of those behaviors and data is. So if you run into the situation where you need data from another boundary or you need to send data to another boundary, ask yourself the question, is that data really in the right spot? Is it in the service that should own it? Maybe you have to kind of rethink your boundaries and rethink where that data lives and put it in the appropriate service, service boundary, that actually has the capabilities that are really related to that data. Now, there are situations where you do need data from another service, and you are sure that your service boundaries are correct. Now, I'm not talking about reporting, query, UI, view model composition. I've done that in another video, explain how that works. What I'm talking about here specifically is you, you have an action or a command as a request come in, and you need to reach out to another service to get data. This could be for validation purposes or that you need to save that data along with whatever state that you're saving for your command. Now, the important part here is what type of data from these other service boundaries. Generally, these will be more service boundaries that are more in a supporting role. And generally that data is more used as reference data and it's not really transactional data. 
And because of that, this is the last point that I'm really gonna touch on here, is that it's non-volatile. And the frequency of that data changing is really important. So I wanna give a few different examples where I think you can use and persist reference data that comes from a supporting boundary. One example of this, since we're talking about e-commerce and shopping carts, is a currency exchange. Let's say a part of that checkout process that you needed to convert, say from USD, United States dollar to Canadian, since I'm in Canada. So if that needed to happen, you may reach out to say some external service or even internal, I kind of view them as the same thing, and you need to get that currency exchange rate, say as of today. But that only happens once a day. And what's happened in the past is still relevant. That historical data is still relevant. So that means that once you go and fetch that data once from the currency exchange to do the concern, uh, conversion from USD to Canadian as of today, you don't need to do it again. It's kind of a once a day thing. So that means that you could persist that data locally, say in the sales service, when yes, really that con conversion rates and all that done is owned by another service appropriately, that doesn't mean that it has to fully own that data and you can't cash it elsewhere because it's non-volatile. So if we were making the call to the exchange rate service every time an order was placed, we'd have availability concerns. And that would mean that if something's unavailable with the exchange rate, our sales service wouldn't even be able to place orders. So we have our client makes a request to place an order. We have to go make that RPC call to get the exchange rate. And then we're able to save that to the database. But again, what happens if it's unavailable or not returning a valid value? If we have a failure here at this point, our sales uh, service can't actually even place the order. And that's really not what we want. We don't wanna have this dependency. So because we know that the exchange rate only changes once per day, that means that we can look at our cash, see, okay, it's not there. Let's make our first call one per day to the exchange rate service to get that currency exchange. And then we can cash that. And then we can then place our order and save it into our database. That way, when another order comes in to get placed, we can get that currency exchange from our cash rather than having to go out and hit the exchange rate service. And then we can then do the same thing and place our order. Now, a key part of this is knowing that external reference data, like my currency exchange, it has a shelf life and when it's valid for. It's valid for when I fetched it, let's say today, but tomorrow it has a different value, so I need to go get it. Now, this is why I'm saying reference data and its volatilities plays a part in this. Now, like something like an currency exchange, obviously likely it would be an external service that you would have to make some synchronous RPC call for. But if you're talking within your own system, many different services, when you do have reference data like this, I'd prefer it to be asynchronous. So as a different example, let's say a part of a sales process when we place an order, we actually need to do validation on the credit score of the customer. We actually need to get that data from another service. Well, it's the same type of thing. Do we make an RPC call to our credit score system to get the value before we actually place our order? Or do we have a local cash? It's the same type of thing is that the volatility matters. In this case, your credit score doesn't likely change for a month or maybe even a month and a half. That means that we could asynchronously have the crediting system publish events to let other service boundaries know about those changes and we can cash them locally. So what that looks like is when something, when our monthly process or aggregated data updates our credit scores, we could be publishing events and then have our sales boundary consume that event and keep a local cache of the customer IDs and what their credit score is. So that means at runtime, we don't have any temporal coupling. We don't need to make an RPC call to the credit system to get the credit score. When we're placing our order, we can reach within our own service boundary that cache, get the credit score value, and then place our order if everything passes validation. Now, just like the currency exchange, there's only a period of time where that data is valid. The same thing goes with the credit score. You're obviously gonna be looking at what was the date of that I received, what's this uh, credit score valid till? so that if you're using that cache data, you're also validating against that. You wanna be using data that's valid in your context, in that use case. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas about how you can share reference data, not transactional data, with other service boundaries for different use cases like validation. Now a key part to remember here is that services, how they're defined is about their capabilities, their behaviors, what they provide to you, and data ownership behind that. 
Just because you can share data doesn't mean you should be sharing data. If you enjoy these topics and you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, make sure to join my channel where you can get access to a private Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.